Today's video, we have a topic that I saw was kind of interesting that was all over Twitter, and it was about the Crimson Tide, the Alabama Crimson Tide, and it was on ESPN, Get Up, I believe, um, and Paul Feinbaum, Heather Dinich was on that show, and they were doing a segment called Overrated and Underrated. And they had Alabama as the first option, and Paul Feinbaum gave his opinion, and I'll show you guys the video right here. Oregon, Texas, Alabama. Bama in year one of the post Saban poll is in at number five. You see the rest of it, Ole Miss, Notre Dame, Penn State, Michigan, Florida State. And so, we bring in our college football team. Heather Dinich is ready to go. Sir Paul is up and ready to go. Let's play a game. The game is called Overrated, Underrated. Paul, I'll start with you. Alabama at number five. Overrated or underrated? They're slightly overrated. Greeny, I still think they're a playoff team, but they're on the cut line. And the fact that they're ranked number five may sound good to some people. This is the lowest Alabama ranking since 2009 in the preseason. Which is right around Paul the time Bob said that Alabama is overrated, and this is the lowest they've been ranked in a preseason poll in a while. And all that is facts, except for the overrated part, in my opinion. Uh, I really don't understand why Alabama has been, quote unquote, a overrated team labeled by some people. I know not everyone has labeled them that, but I just don't see the fall off that people are seeing in Alabama. And maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I think Jalen Milrow has a lot to gain this season in terms of I think he's going to be a lot better of a quarterback than some people think. And I think that will help them win more and more football games because I think he struggled sometimes relying on his uh, legs and that kind of hurt him sometimes. But, man, Jalen Milrow is a talented player. He has a great arm. And uh, once he figures it out, which I think he will – do and I, it's just hard for me to see a fall off for this team I mean I know people see they lose Caleb Downs and certain guys but man this roster still is insane on paper I mean they're going to be one of the top talent composite teams so it's not like Alabama just got drained from talent the only thing I could say is I believe there will be a fall off from Nick Saban to Kalen DeBoer because Nick Saban was the greatest of all time and Kalen DeBorn is a fantastic coach. He's won everywhere he's been. But, he, you know, obviously he's not a Nick Saban. I think that's clear. But I just don't see the the overrated part. I think fifth is really fair for it in the preseason. I don't think people are really overhyping them. I think some people see the flaws. But, man, that offense has the potential to be pretty explosive. Now, I, I don't know too much about their offensive coordinator, but I do know Kalen DeBorn. It's kind of his offense, to be fair. And um, if, if it's the same type of offense that they used at Washington, they'll be just fine. That, that, was that Washington offense was amazing to watch. And this staff that Alabama has is going to be one of the best staffs in the country. I mean, who they have as their defensive coordinator and just like at these position groups is amazing. They had some big hires. And I was a big fan of a lot of these guys coming in. And uh, the way that they're recruiting, too, has been insane, absolutely insane on the recruiting trail. And that really hasn't fallen off. And I don't know. I don't really understand it at all. I mean, Alabama does have a tough schedule this year. I don't think they're going to be a 12-0 football team. I don't think that at all. But they will definitely be a national championship contender, in my opinion. So they have Wisconsin as their big non-conference game. Then they have Georgia, which is going to be an incredible game, September 28th, so early in the season. They have South Carolina, Tennessee, Missouri, LSU, and then Oklahoma and Auburn, obviously. So there's a lot of tough games. I mean, Tennessee, Alabama, Oklahoma, Auburn, Georgia. Those are a good stretch of games that are going to be really tough. And, um, yeah, they're going to have to come to play because some of those games – like they have to play at Knoxville again, and we know what happened last time. Uh, LSU has to, they have to go to LSU actually, and then they have to go to Oklahoma. So every game is going to be tough. Uh, Georgia does have to go to Tuscaloosa, so that's going to be pretty cool. But they have to go to the bounce house, which I think Alabama will probably win that game. But who knows? Maybe it could be tough. 
it's it's gonna be tough schedule wise to get through it. It's the toughest schedule Alabama's probably had in forever. And it's not to discredit them, it's just the SEC with Texas, Oklahoma, how scheduling's done. There's no divisions now, so scheduling is gonna be just as much crazier in the SEC. So that's a good thing with the new additions in my opinion. But if Alabama comes to play in those big games, I could see this team being a two loss team, even a one loss team. And they will if they go if they do that, they will be a big contender in the national championship. I mean they will be one of the favorites easily in my opinion. Like if they finish that schedule, which is not the toughest schedule in the country, but it's really up there. It's probably top 20 easily, top 15. If they finish that schedule really well, I just don't see, like, they would be a real threat. And uh, I, I don't understand having them as the preseason number five. Now, I'm not saying they should be higher, but them at five seems pretty appropriate to me. But I don't know. It let me know in the comments what you guys think, and that'll do for me. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next video. Peace.